You've probably seen all this stuff about Rafael Varane and other mm. players saying it's Armageddon. We're playing uh, 100 minutes of football. It's all too much football. It's pitiful. Oh, OK, you're not buying it, Andy. No, no, I'm not buying it at all. And the thing is, the, the problem for this is that pl coaches and players see time-wasting as a legitimate tactic. Mm. And they're not happy that they, they're not going to be able to get away with it. Yeah. That's what it, this is about. Not all oh, duty of care. Oh, you're, worried. you're only playing another five minutes. You've already got half the team can be substituted. It's rubbish. It's just you don't like the idea yeah. you can't use time wasting anymore. Well, I, I think I think agreeing with you broadly, uh, a man we often turn to for for his common sense take on all matters, mainly mm. VAR, but other other things as well. Normally, mm. when everybody's raging and saying sack them, put them on an island, and all that, <laughs> Dale Johnson from ESPN <laughs> is the voice of reason. But in this case, I think he broadly agrees with you. Uh, good afternoon, Dale. Good afternoon, guys. How are you doing? Good, good, thank you. Yeah, you've said much the same thing. Let's get the top line. Very interesting post you did on what Varane said. You said if players stop wasting time in showing dissent towards officials, there won't be extensive added time. The whole point of this is this IFAB's directive, not the FA's. So players stop wasting time, ball in play time increases, added time reduces back down. Uh, which is more or less what you're saying, yeah, Andy, isn't absolutely. it? Yeah. Uh, have, you, have you been surprised by the reaction of the players after this weekend? Not particularly, because I think the weekend in the AFL was particularly uh, excessive. And I know that, that we, will, we will probably see that, from what I've been told, we'll see that come down slightly because the directives that were given to referees were probably followed too, too strictly and too much to the letter. Um, so... While we saw virtually every game last over 100 minutes this weekend, I don't think we'll see that happen in future. Um, one of the main things that will be which is going to change that uh, didn't happen before was goal celebrations are going to be added on exactly, whereas it used to be like 30 seconds. Whereas now, take for instance the uh, the Community Shield the weekend, uh, the Manchester City celebration lasted one minute and 10 seconds, which is obviously an extra 40 seconds to what we've seen mm. now done in the past. So. A lot of it is going to be just stuff like that, stuff around exact substitution times. But where the players can change that, as I mentioned, is about delaying the restart and time wasting. And when you get throw-ins, when someone's like giving a throw-in away, they just kick the ball down the touchline. It's stuff like that what we're going to see added mm. on properly now. Um, and and I think it, I think it's a good thing. And and apparently uh, the Premier League is only expecting an extra three minutes per game. None of this five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes. The, uh, the average last season was 8 minutes and 20 seconds across the two halves. And the Premier League reckons it will be just over 11 minutes of this season based upon last season and how it expects its referees to be implementing this. I think there'll be carnage this week in the Premier League. We've got Anthony Taylor. I mean, he already sends off a Chelsea player every time he does this. I reckon he could break his record. <laughs> well, what we don't want, we don't want a situation where, I mean, goal celebrations, for example, we don't want them excessive. We don't want everybody's shirt off, jumping into the crowd, taking a minute and a half, two minutes to get back. But we don't want it to be the kind of goal celebration you have when you know, there's three minutes left and you're 4-1 down. You yeah. just pick the ball out the net and run back en masse to the centre circle. That is part of the joy of goal yeah, celebration. You can take the emotion out of it. And, and you're right in, in the sense that if it's not just the players and the way they manage the game time or mismanage. It's the managers as well because so often it's so clear that players have been sent out to do stuff. How often a minute before the end of a game or just a minute mm. into injury time, a team are winning 1-0... One of the players goes down, you know, just sort of sits on the floor on the pitch, makes no attempt to get yeah, off, yeah. just sits down. And you think, oh, come on, that's a directive. So it is kind of up to the clubs. It's up to the managers and the players to, to deal with this. And we won't get these excessive matches. I think one interesting thing on that, what you just mentioned about players tactically sitting down, is one change they've, missed the, they've made this season is that if a player doesn't, doesn't actually receive treatment for an injury, they've got to leave the field and stay off for a minimum of 30 seconds. So if you get these teams making these particular tactical moves to break up the play when they're not injured, then they could end up with their team down to 10 men for at least 30 seconds, which could actually result in that uh, costing them a goal. So that's one way. I mean, there are other things that are more difficult to stop, which is when uh, managers, certainly in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of um, tactical team breaks where a player will go down in, say, the 65th minute and um, everyone will run over to the touchline to the coach and take basically a brand new team talk. And I mean, I'd like to say, see that outlawed. So you can't have that sort of tactical break. But I, I think we're still going to see that this season.
And the timing of the, the actual VAR reviews, the time it takes to, to do that, that's always a bit unsatisfactory about how much they actually add on because some of them can take ages. And the other thing, argument for the players, while that's going on, you're not actually running about. You're getting a bit of rest. You're getting a little break. Mm. So, you know, which you've never had before, before VAR even existed. But one thing our web's trying to do is bring down the time that the VAR reviews take, isn't he? Yeah, that's true. And I think we might see that improve. There's been a lot more coaches brought in um, just really to help with the way that the, the VARs are speaking, going through their process to make it more um, regimented, if you if you will, so that they're going A, B, C, D and coming through decisions rather than going through too many steps, watching a replay too many times and doubting their own decision, which they may originally have done by their instincts. Mm. So, I mean, hopefully we'll see that improve. I'm sure that um, I'll be back on with you uh, within a couple of weeks where people have got very angry at this season. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how that goes on across the season. Goalkeepers' time wasting is a big bugbear of a lot of people. And um, one of mine has, has Again, been... Again, a tactic. Yeah, one of mine has been not giving a yellow card for a time wasting keeper to the 80th minute when he's quite happy to take one for the team and that's what his plan was. If he gets one after 20 minutes, it might focus the mind. And we were chatting earlier on, apparently... I was chatting to Jamie, our assistant producer. The six-second rule is no longer in law as such. It's a kind of discretionary thing for with the referees. Is that right? Um, it's not right. That's still in the laws. Oh. I, was on a, um, I was on a call with Pierre-Louis Cleaner, who, who runs all this a few months ago, and I asked him this very question about six-second rule, and, and he admitted it is something which has really lapsed across the globe, and referees are no longer enforce it. Um, and he sort of intimated that they were going to try and get the leagues to clamp down a bit more, but I just can't see it happening. It's just because, as you sort of hint at, it feels as though it's been, it's gone out of the laws when it hasn't really. But can you imagine the first time a referee does enforce it? And now it would be great to see, but I think a referee would love to be that person that makes that first decision if it costs someone, when even though the law has been broken. Uh, I, I do sense, and again, it's not particularly scientific, this, that there's not a great deal of sympathy for what uh, Varane has no. said and maybe what other players and managers have been saying. And maybe your little straw poll of some of your followers is an indicator of this because you asked the question to, and 4,875 people that followed you uh, on Twitter answered this. You asked, do you support the increased stoppage time as a method to combat and reduce time wasting? 78% of uh, your followers said yes, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I think there's a, at the moment there is definitely a large majority of people who want to see this, the, want to see an end to this, like tapping the ball away to stop a quick throw-in or a quick free kick or, or what have you. It used to be the case whereby players who were running really would get booked for that if they really booted the ball like miles away. Whereas it's, it sort of became accepted that if you just sort of give it a little tap five or ten yards down the touchline, then that's all right and get away with it. <laughs> So I think people want to see an end to that and they feel as though this sort of change to add, the, add that time on when it happens and punish the player, I think people just want to see that improve. 